It might not be quite as mysterious as the Soul Stone, but the Power Stone is something we have seen precious little of in the MCU. Although Thanos claimed to have destroyed it along with the rest of the Infinity Stones, we don't think the Power Stone story has ended quite yet. Let's take a closer look at the infamous orb, the role it played in the MCU so far, and what events it may have set in motion. If you had trouble keeping up with the history of the Infinity Stones, we don't blame you. Heck, even our heroes struggle to piece it all together in Avengers Endgame. These magical MacGuffins have been scattered all over the galaxy, across about a decade's worth of films, and most of them have multiple monikers because they're also known by their containment devices. The Space Stone is contained within the Tesseract, the Time Stone within the Eye of Agamotto, and of course we have the Power Stone, which was held inside the Orb. Although it may have the least exciting nickname of the bunch, the Orb is still incredibly powerful. It even helped Thanos land a serious blow on the almighty Captain Marvel. But pretty much from the beginning, we had questions about the Power Stone in Guardians of the Galaxy. In the film, we see Peter Quill tracking down the orb in a scene complete with some great dance moves and an A-plus soundtrack. Although he recovers it relatively easy, he runs into trouble when he tries to sell it to the broker. Because Ronan the Accuser was also after it, the broker decided the deal wasn't worth getting bashed over the head by his giant hammer and called it off. This was a headache for Peter, but a pretty sound business decision. We're no experts, but earning the ire of the Mad Titan and his associates seems like a bad idea. It's clear that when he acquired it, Peter had no idea what was in the orb or how powerful it was. He was only interested in what he could sell it for. But how did someone like Peter manage to find the orb in the first place? After all, Thanos had been searching for the Infinity Stones for ages, and yet Peter managed to get there first despite not knowing what's in the orb? Some fans thought this might have even been a plot hole, but it's explained fairly easily in the film if you pay attention to the dialogue. Although we know that's easier said than done with all of the aliens, fight scenes, and the aforementioned sick soundtrack. During their conversation, Peter revealed he had been specifically commissioned to obtain the orb. Well, really, Yondu and the Ravagers had gotten the job, but Peter decided to do a little bit of freelancing. This means the location of the orb was provided for him by the broker's client, who is later revealed to be Tanelier Tavon, better known as the Collector. Since the Collector has been around since the beginning of the universe, it's not too surprising he knew where to find the Power Stone. And as to why he wanted it, well, you could probably figure out why the Collector wanted it on your own. It's in his name. Our heroes watch a brief PowerPoint presentation on the history of the Infinity Stones and the Power Stone in particular. It has an interesting backstory that ties into the events of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 and possibly the future of the MCU itself. The Infinity Stones were created eons ago, and the Power Stone's previous owner was none other than a Celestial. These ancient beings are incredibly powerful, and we later learned Peter Quill's father, Ego, was one of them, which explains why Peter was able to hold on to the Power Stone for a short time at the end of the movie. The stone's last owner was a celestial named Isan the Searcher, who promptly used it to bring about carnage and destruction. We don't learn too much about Isan in the movie, other than the fact that he wasn't exactly a conservationalist, but in the comic books, Isan is sent to Earth in order to observe it and unfortunately ends up having to spend time in Florida. Ugh. If he thought the planet deserved annihilation after that, yeah, we wouldn't really blame him. But instead he ends up scrapping with the Deviants, which turns into a whole thing, but the MCU stayed away from that so far, and instead, Eason is just a cautionary tale about not letting the Power Stone fall into the wrong hands. There's a little pee coming out of me right now. That's pretty much what we have for the history of the Power Stone, and if you noticed, we really don't know who stuck it inside the orb. Being able to create a containment device for such a powerful artifact can't be easy, and it must have been done by someone who didn't desire the power for themselves. Did the cosmic beings create it before their failed collective attempt at using it? Or was there someone else out there who interfered with the Power Stone at some point in time? It's an interesting question and one we might find out more about in the near future based on the current MCU movie lineup. After what seemed like forever, Marvel Studios finally confirmed we're getting a movie based on the Eternals in Fall 2020. Like the Infinity Stones, the Eternals have a history that also involves the Celestials. When the Celestials visited Earth, they saw early humans and thought, eh, we can do better. It turns out they weren't wrong and managed to create a race of humanoid beings who are way more powerful and awesome than your average human. Although we're familiar with the comic book history of the Eternals, we're not sure what their backstory will be in the MCU. After all, Marvel Studios is known to change things around when they adapt the source material for their movies. Just consider the fact that Drax the Destroyer is green in the comic books but blue on the big screen. We know it's such a distracting shakeup. We can barely enjoy the movies now! It would be interesting to see if the history of the Eternals was at all intertwined with the Infinity Stones, and if they played a role in making them who they are. Could the Eternals have something to do with how the orb to contain the Power Stone was created? Infinity Stone.
At the end of Guardians of the Galaxy, we saw the Guardians happily turn the orb over to the Nova Corps for safekeeping. This seemed like a good move at the time, but it turns out that it was a pretty bad call, especially for the Nova Corps. In Avengers Infinity War, we learn that Thanos had managed to cut through them in order to get the Power Stone, and... This time, he didn't settle for wiping out half of them, and instead wiped out the entire Nova Corps. However many fans think it's strange that such a massive battle would happen completely off-screen, this movie had a Disney-caliber budget, so why not even show even a hint of what must have been a truly epic battle? One of the most compelling reasons might be that the fight didn't happen exactly the way Thanos reported it. No, we don't think he was lying, but it's possible he wasn't as thorough as he thought about wiping out the Nova Corps. It's possible that at least one soldier managed to escape, and that Thanos either didn't notice or still considered them decimated for all intents and purposes. Of course, while we were over the top excited to hear about the Eternals movie that'll be a part of Marvel's Phase 4, one of our top picks didn't make the cut. Marvel Studios has been talking about making a movie featuring Richard Rider, aka Nova, for quite some time. But just because he's not getting his debut in Phase 4 doesn't mean it's not going to happen. For instance, Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 3 didn't make the cut of the Comic-Con Phase 4 announcements, but we know it's only a matter of time before it comes out. You know, just as soon as James Gunn finishes working on the sequel to Suicide Squad. Can we put a rush on that? In the comic books, the Nova Corps gets annihilated, not by Thanos and not just once. Yes, even though this is a squad of elite warriors who draw their powers from the mystical Nova Force, they've been exterminated at least three times. They've been wiped out by the alien Zor, by Nebula, and the Annihilation Wave set in motion by Annihilus. Oh, and the Skrulls really did a number on them as well at one point. But on one occasion, a member of the Nova Corps managed to survive, and it's someone we've seen in the MCU before, Roman Day. In the comic books, Roman Day is grievously injured during the destruction of the Nova Corps, but manages to pass along his powers to a teenager named Richard Ryder first. Richard calls himself Nova in honor of Roman and the Nova Corps, and sets about becoming a costume crime fighter. This certainly seems as though it could easily tie in with the events of Infinity War, and it wouldn't be too difficult to explain Nova's absence in Endgame and Phase 4. Although Richard hails from planet Earth, he soon discovers Roman's spaceship and naturally uses it to explore the galaxy. Seriously, otherwise it would just be a waste. In the time since Infinity War, Richard could either have been laying low on Earth or be on another planet entirely. In a way, Thanos destroying the Nova Corps to obtain the Power Stone could have created a new powerful force of good in the universe. Now let's talk about the future of the Power Stone in the MCU. Okay, we know what you're thinking. You think there is no future for the Power Stone because Thanos destroyed it along with the rest of the Infinity Stones. In Avengers Endgame, our heroes finally track down the Mad Titan. Who's not looking too hot? He used the Infinity Stones to destroy the Infinity Stones, so the decimation couldn't be undone. This act nearly claimed his life, but it did seem to be effective. The only way our heroes were able to undo the decimation was to travel back in time and collect the Infinity Stones when they existed, which was no easy task. Considering we all know about messing with the time-space continuum, we have a feeling our heroes aren't going to be running back through time whenever there's a problem. But how gone is gone? That is, is it impossible for the Infinity Stones to be used again? According to the Russo brothers, Thanos did get rid of the Infinity Stones by reducing them to their atomic levels. They claim the stones are still present in the universe. So although they're probably inaccessible to most people, it certainly seems as though the Infinity Stones aren't really gone for good. It's quite possible that they could come back, and we're guessing whoever gets a hold of them won't be interested in using them for good things. Of course, all the Infinity Stones are dangerous in their own ways, but the Power Stone certainly seems like an easy choice for someone looking to unleash destruction. Plus, considering the fact that you have to be incredibly strong in order to use the stone in the first place. During Guardians of the Galaxy, we saw what happened when an average person tries to use it, and it ain't pretty. Any being strong enough to use the Power Stone has the potential to be an incredible threat without the stone, let alone with it. If the Eternals and more Celestials are introduced into the MCU, it's definitely a possibility that the Power Stone could make a return, and we're guessing it won't be good. On one hand, the Infinity Stones were a huge part of the MCU, and many fans feel as though they serve their purpose and are ready to move on to new and exciting cosmic threats. That being said, what about Adam Warlock, who we briefly saw at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2? The Infinity Stones are a crucial element to his story, in addition to all the other stories they could fit into. Considering how powerful they are and how the Russo brothers purposefully said they're still around, we wouldn't be all too surprised to see them come back.